Hi, I am the Vicar, and welcome. Today's topic, although a little bit sensitive, is something that I believe has much value in being talked about, because I think it's something everybody will go through during their lives at some point, or they will at least experience it in some aspects of their lives. And what made me want to talk about this is the fact that I've gone through this again recently. Only this time around, I managed to deal with it way better than what I did back when I was a teenager. Which is great, right? Show us some improvement. All the years weren't in vain and all of that. And the stark difference between these two approaches made me want to elaborate on the topic for a little bit. And I do this in hopes that in sharing my experience, I will help you think about this topic in a more open, candid way. It's, you know, rare enough that people are willing to talk about topics that are so uncomfortable as this. And I believe that these feelings of inadequacy, if left unchecked, they can grow into other very powerful feelings that are capable from keeping you from pursuing what you want. And, as I am a strong advocate that you should pursue what you want, I thought it would be cool to share my perspective on things. Also, I will try and convince you that feeling inadequate isn't a reason not to feel hopeful. <laughs> and I'll explain what I mean in due time. Before I do that, in order for you to understand where I'm coming from, I will need to tell you a little bit more about myself and actually tell you the story of how it was that I felt inadequate for the first time as an artist. I've always been interested and passionate about drawing since a very early age. I remember my mom kept some of my earliest drawings that I made when I was three or four years old. She keeps them stashed away in neat little plastic bags. She says it's to keep the, the paper from aging too fast. <laughs> I think it's cute that she does this. So, we're talking about before I was five, right? Also, when I was a kid, I had this little friend group filled with other little boys who were also very much interested in drawing. We would meet often, and we would share our fan art with each other and share drawing tips which was something that really helped me fuel my passion for art early on in my life. The fan arts would be from our favorite characters at the time. And, of course, Goku would show up often. Because he did have a pretty big influence in our characters growing up. We were little boys, after all. And Akira Toriyama was one of the greatest of our time. You shall be missed, brother. However, 
Unfortunately for Goku, he would show up often as the most abhorrent beast known to man. <laughs> with deformed limbs and muscles in places where there shouldn't be any. You know, stuff like that. We were learning, after all. So what we did is we practiced. We practiced quite a lot and got better together, which was quite a fun time. But as you know, time giveth and time taketh away. Eventually, those friends had their interests fluctuating towards other hobbies, other activities. Until I was the only one who kept on practicing. It would be the case that I would arrive from school and just draw two or three fan arts a day. So, you know, just practicing and practicing. And eventually I got really good. I was able to draw stuff from memory and um, from imagination. I would make less and less mistakes while drawing anatomy and things were just going smoothly, pretty smoothly. So much so that I could confidently say that at one point I was the best at drawing in my circle of immediate acquaintances, you know, because there really weren't, you know, that many people drawing around me. And, you know, the people who used to draw kind of dropped it with time. So, fast forwarding time, with me being 13 to 14 years old, I was studying next to this place that was a venue which, in which uh, small anime conventions were held once every two months. And it was a really cool time. I would go there with my friends from from school and we would you know just check out the cosplays buy some merch watch some anime episodes in the movie theater you know just have fun and at some point I don't remember exactly when it came to my attention that these small conventions held Uh, fan art contests and then someone told me that for the uh, the podium first second and third place in, in these little contests uh, the winners would get really really nice prizes those would be generally the best kinds of items being sold at the stalls that were in the venue um, you know cosplays, DVD sets things like that so when I was processing that information I kind of went huh well I know how to draw I know I am pretty good at it So I'm pretty sure I can get at least a third place, right? <laughs> I had that uh, teenage hubris going on, that false modesty. Gotta love the teenage brain. But you know, can you blame me? I really didn't know any better. So I thought it would be pretty harmless, right? I would just bring a drawing that I was very confident on and wait for the results. So that's exactly what I did. So the next time the convention was on, I brought with me this portrait of Itachi that I had made uh, based on another that I had seen online. It was a monochrome in which I had only 
colored the red eyes, the Sharingan. So I go up to where the Countess participants are. I bring the drawing to the lineup. I put it up and say to myself, okay, now we wait. And when the results came out, I hadn't even make, made it close to third place. So I thought to myself, oh, okay, that's weird. Surely, surely there was a mistake, right? Something went wrong. Let me try, let me try this again. So, for the next convention, I prepared another drawing. And I was very certain that this one was going to work. So, when it was time for the convention again, same deal. Went to put it in the lineup. And I went on to wait again. This time though, I remember being a little bit anxious. But I was doing that inner pep talk, you know? I was like, nah man, this time, this time I'll certainly get something. And again, didn't even make it near third place. Um, at that point, I was acting a little bit like the fox, the story about the fox and the grapes, you know the one? And I started thinking things like, oh, who needs this anyways? <laughs> you know, kind of trying to minimize it. And this is actually a pretty common response to a situation like this, when you think about it. Because uh, when you're faced with these types of unavoidable truths, that can shake your views the first thing you try to do is either ignore it or just run away from it you know just so your brain doesn't have to adapt that to that new info that you just got and what was happening at the time was that i didn't want to face the fact that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. But, you know, no matter how you look at it, the truth remains the truth. You can't outrun it, right? So eventually, me thinking about this too much added up to the reasons why I stopped drawing for a time. I felt inadequate because I was so sure that I had this thing that was special and suddenly I am exposed to people who not only can do this very same special thing, they can do it far better than I could at the time. And you know, eventually I would admit and this is the right expression right i would have to admit that the other drawings in the contest were way better than mine and this kind of shattered my ego since i was a teen and i didn't know any better uh but I will say that discovering that you aren't really special in the slightest will pull the rug from under you at just any age. <laughs> and the feeling that remains from that discovery is something crippling that really nags at you whenever you're trying to get back into what you were doing in the first place you think things like oh why bother when there are people who are so much better than me um, and being really honest with you I don't think I've ever gotten over 
this completely because it stayed with me for the longest time like there were even the times when I believed that the effort wasn't worth it at all which is a foolish thought right but of course hindsight can't help your past self <laughs> and the ways that I will still feel inadequate nowadays still have something to do with people being better than me uh, recently it happened because I found this Japanese illustrator right the guy is just amazing his art is mesmerizing, man. You can't really take your eyes off of it. And the way that these things will work in my head is if I see an artist that I already know for some time and that I admire post something, I will look at it, find it cool, you know, maybe even get a little bit inspired. But when I find someone who I had never seen before and I see that they have this huge presence, that they are incredibly good and especially if they have a design philosophy that is really near to what I want mine to be, I will be like, Oh no, man. Another contender. Here we go. <laughs> but yeah, this will happen because I am still incredibly self conscious about my art. Because I started sharing artwork online in 2020, but I only started getting somewhat consistent last year and well I say consistent but you know at least I've posted last year <laughs> right um, so what happens is that you know what I will feel is a little bit of sadness that this person is occupying a place that I am still not ready to occupy to. You know, I'm not ready to be there yet. Or just because of the fact that I am not like them. And of course, when we're talking about the internet, especially social media, uh, we are exposed to amazing people on the daily right people who are undoubtedly way way more amazing at something than you are you know it, it's just how things work so seeing that i would find one of these almost every day i feel dejected about it often and this feeling would keep me from creating art or even finishing the ones I was already working on. I remember when I was making this piece I called Summertime Fantasia, which is a reference to the summer event that was going on in Genshin Impact at the time. Uh, also, if you didn't notice yet that I love Genshin Impact, here's me admitting it to you directly right now. Okay, so anywho, it took me a long time to finish. And I would, you know, go to work early in the morning and then I arrive home incredibly tired in the evening. And... I would just not find the energy to get it done, not find the energy to sit down and, you know, do have some progress. Um, so the entire thing took me a long time over many, many weekends, 
and there were even the weekends that I wouldn't even look at the drawing tablet at all. And all of this came from these feelings of inadequacy, you know, these feelings that I wasn't able to measure up to my peers. All these repeat offender thoughts would be would be there. You know the ones, right? Things like no, uh, maybe it is too late for me. I am over 30 after all. What's the point? Or I'll never get that good in time. Or this time is never coming back to me. Maybe I should invest it into something else. Is it really worth it for me to sit down here and try it as hard? You know, those kinds of thoughts. Then I would, you know, open Instagram and, and go through other artists' artwork and just keep on giving confirmation to these thoughts. It really was a vicious cycle. Eventually, I broke away from that cycle. And honestly, I am not sure when that happened, but at some point, I started thinking, when will I be this good? Rather than, why can't I be this good? You know, it's an interesting shift in perspective. It kind of makes everything click. Uh, because I was always aware of the fact that skills take time to develop, but I had never actually applied the concept to myself until then. <laughs> Weird, right? And it's impressive how often this will happen. Uh, you will know something as a general rule, and even though it is general, you will never really apply this to yourself. It's weird, right? So, as I started applying this concept to my own journey, my attitude towards it got a lot better. And when I look at how much I have already achieved and at this newfound confidence, that I have on myself nowadays, I understand that this sad journey has only just begun. And no matter how cliche and cringe you think this is, it's the truth, right? <laughs> you have to be able to start a new journey no matter your age, you know? No matter if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, you have to be able to just, you know, start walking. Uh, so I find confirmation in this conclusion that I just talked about with you and the journey of my favorite artist, the Cecile. She, she's just amazing. She has been good for many years, which, you know, you can confirm by just scrolling down on her YouTube page and seeing her speed paints, the earliest ones. Even her earliest ones are far above my current level, at least. And I have been practicing, man. I, I really have. Uh, and you know, she's just great. She was great back then already, and and that means that she has been on this journey for far longer than when she posted in these earliest videos, which would be, I don't know, about seven years ago, maybe ten. So, you know, uh, sometimes the invasive thoughts win against, you know, the mental health barrier 
that we put on our brains and I still kind of start to think that I won't ever get to where the people I admire are, never get to their level. But at least now I know that this is a little trick of the brain to try and keep me from putting in the effort <laughs> because the brain will always try to choose the road of less effort possible to preserve its energy and talking about the least amount of effort possible let's talk a little bit about the AI problem because this is a technology that can definitely make you feel inadequate and undervalued if you're a creative. Um, there is this artist and YouTuber that I follow that I actually really like. His name is Adam Duff. He has talked a lot about AI last year. And he has been an artist for a pretty long time. I think he's a little bit over 40. So he has had, you know, I believe over 25 years of experience in, in the industry. So he went through some major technological shifts. Uh, and he talks about how he felt inadequate at a time where 2D animation shifted into 3D animation and he compares that to what is going on with AI generated images and you know of course the shift in technology is in no way comparable <laughs> because AI is leaps and bounds uh, more advanced than going from 2D to 3D and also in learning 3D animation you still need to learn how to model a character how to animate it you know you need to learn uh, the basics of cinematography you have to learn uh, a lot about angles so you know animating 3d is actually learning a skill whereas ai is just you know going to a website sometimes a free website uh write some stuff into a text box and in seconds, you're going to get an image generated for you with the characteristics that you asked for in the text box. Um, so, even though the comparison is a little bit off, I do believe that the same logic can still apply because uh, it's more about the sentiment, right? It's more about how it feels. And what I mean by this is uh, how this shift in technology changes our relationship to our work, right? It changes how we view things. Um but it's also something that we will still need to adapt to in order to survive. Adam, for example, he had to learn 3D to get some more jobs in studios, or at least that's what he thought at the time. I, I invite you to take a look at his channel, it's, it's really good stuff. Um, so, all of this is going to be really complicated, uh, especially with beginners, because although AI doesn't check 
enough boxes to be called art uh, you know by itself it still is capable of creating images that are really good from a technical standpoint you know it's passable lighting passable angles if you fit it enough images it will even be able to imitate some things obviously not entirely but it's still you know it's a learning it's a learning model right isn't that what they call it um so beginners especially will have a hard time dealing with ai i remember that it that this ai thing exploded as i was you know just beginning to to share my stuff online and i would try and you know just look at some nice uh paintings in pixiv and see you know pages upon pages of ai stuff just flooding everything and it's really repetitive boring stuff right but at the same time often good technical quality it just lacks so so it being a good a technically good image becomes uh, becomes annoying because when you are a beginner you're still not really good at the techniques right so for you to get an image to be technically good you have to go through hours and hours of study through much practice and things like that right you're using your time in order to get better at something you're developing a skill and and then all of a sudden there comes this service online where you can just type a few things and get an image to with a similar quality <laughs> yeah man it, what is really aggravating about this is the the fact that it takes little to no effort ai bros will try to convince you that they actually work really hard for their prompts as if you know typing in a few characteristics of the image that you want was really such a hard thing to do maybe for the illiterate but anyway so i digress and i'm also getting a little bit petty so i'll stop <laughs> right um so of course something like this would make you feel inadequate and even sad uh, and regarding feeling undervalued by it i mentioned it because i remember seeing some people on twitter saying that they've lost jobs because of ai and even if we can't really verify the truth to this because you know it's their account so uh, how can you know unless you know them personally right it still gives us some food for thought because you know it's it's not really hard to imagine a company throwing some artists out of the window to substitute them for something that is cheaper because this is just how companies work right minimize the effort maximize the profit this is just the rules however even though i just dumped all of this pessimism on you i will do a complete 180 now and tell you why i believe we can actually be hopeful about the future so uh being extremely blunt right from the get-go there is no point in fighting ai like you 
You can't stop the progress of technology. We never could and we never will. Uh, the technology will only get more and more efficient, right? The point is, don't wear yourself down on a battle that you can't win. Instead, use the willpower that you would need for, for that to go through the hardship caused by it instead. You know, because willpower is a limited resource that we replenish every day and if you just keep on wasting it on on these things it will keep you from pursuing what you really want to pursue right of course protect yourself if you can I am aware that there are services online like Nightshade that you can run your art through and it will install some code that poisons the AI models and then they can't really generate anything good looking from what you make. Uh, I'm not sure how it works, but you know, if you trust the, those things, you should absolutely make use of them. And you know how humanity works, right? Eventually, someone somewhere will create something terrible using AI that will just, you know, scandalize the world and just go too far making the technology be regulated into oblivion and even if the technology will never really die off completely i believe that we can find solace in the fact that art has always existed and you know if it has been with humanity since forever there's a reason for it, right? We need it. After all, communication is what being a human is all about, right? From the cavemen to the great masters of old, right on to us and into the future. Heart will always be there. So, you can remember that if everything dies, like, if the services are discontinued, if the servers go down, if the program somehow gets banished from existence, you still have the skills. You still be an artist. You still be this beautiful, sensitive, creative complex and wonderful artists so you know so what if someone is making a quick buck off AI generated stuff right they don't have the resilience that you've built studying art for so long as you have they don't know what you know and so what if AI bros have been delivering prime cringe to your DMs they don't have what you have. And they never will. Because they do not wish to develop it, right? They want it easy. So, keep your chin up. Because in the end, the machine is just a tool. And you can't pour your soul into anything through the circuitry of a machine. That's why drawing tablets and pen displays require direct input and skill don't don't let a machine define what you are and what you aren't you know just keep on working on yourself and making everything that's immediately immediately around you more beautiful okay so that's it for AI uh, when it comes to other artists 
work and prowess there is actually a little something I've learned with age and also a few insights from people who are wiser than me which is you shouldn't take your own measure through other people's ruler what I mean by this is that you can't really expect to be as skilled with four years of practice as someone who has been on the same path for 15 years right building skill takes time what happened is just that they have a good head start on you. So you're basically looking at yourself in a few years from now. Not only that, they've probably gone through some of the same troubles that you are going through right now. You know, some of the same insecurities, some of the same challenges, some of the same trials and tribulations. You just don't know about it because, well, an artist's journey to self-betterment is usually a solitary one. We each suffer in our own way. Um, it honestly depends on the whole entirety of our zeitgeist. So whenever it seems difficult for you to be unbothered by by this uh, this difference in experience between you and an artist that you admire or that you've seen online uh, I would advise you to take the time to look back at your own journey and see how much you've improved for example, what can you do now that you couldn't before? <laughs> Tell me in the comments if you made it this far in the video. Also, what's most important in nullifying those feelings of inadequacy is to keep them from stopping you, to avoid them holding you back and keeping you from pursuing what you want so we are all going to go through these feelings at some point so just beware that these feelings of inadequacy rarely have anything to do with you not being able to um, become more than what you are right now or with not being in any way sufficient. Um, instead, the reason is usually because you're still not what you want to be. But honestly, isn't that just the way things are? Aren't we the type of people who always want to be better than what we are right now the type of people who always want to grow aren't we the type of people who are always uh, learning something and adding to how we express ourselves so try to wear this like armor like Tyrion would say right we creatives are way too unique to fit in perfectly anyways. <laughs> so, you know, we can't really be more of the same. So, be inadequate. Feel different. Acknowledge your imperfections and use them to fuel your movement forward 
Understand that you have a long road ahead of you. Understand that if you keep putting one foot in front of the other, you will get there. All right? I have patience. I know it can be much to ask nowadays, depending on your situation, but it's still necessary. And the good thing about it is that patience is actually a skill, meaning you can learn to have patience. All right? So, you know, take the time in your journey to get to know yourself a little bit better. Our identity is what we are always pouring into all of our works every single time. Our styles, if you will. So, understand what makes your identity truly yours. Once you do, never lose sight of it. Alright? Okay. That's all I wanted to talk about for today. I hope you do take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.